your number one news team covering the North. The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. Members of the medical community on Grand Bahama, as well as family, friends, and patients of Dr. Augustin Ohui attending a memorial service on the island last evening. Those who knew him best regarded him as a caring, compassionate, industrious, and approachable physician. Practice immeasurable far and wide throughout Grand Bahama, even the Bahamas. Every single patient he ever touched would remember him. Every single one of his fellow physicians and doctors and nurses and staff of the GBHS, people in his church, everywhere you go, everybody seems to know Dr. Hui, even in Nassau, because he served for a while on the Bahamas Medical Council, as well as the relationship that he built over the years with his colleagues throughout the Bahamas. He was a teacher. A physician par excellence. There's actually, I may ruffle a few feathers by saying this, but he was the number one doctor on Grand Bahama for many, for so many years. And I think you look at the, uh, at the persons here in attendance, this is truly a testament to that. He was one of a kind. He was someone who gave everything. He gave us 20 years here in, in the community of Freeport, 20 years of service to Grand Bahama Health Services. And I think he, he is truly um, irreplaceable in that regard. Um, I was pleased to know him as a mentor and as a co-worker, but more than that, as a friend. And I think, I think we've lost a gem here in Freeport, and, but I, I think his legacy will go on for many years to come. Well, Dr. Hui was one of the most beautiful human beings that you know, I would say I've been blessed to have in my life. He you know, was the be best example of what a person a physician could and should be and he was always in a state of learning and teaching and sharing that information with us as colleagues and friends and you know I'm just grateful that I would have had the opportunity to have worked with him. He was a good man. He was a man who loved Grand Bahama. He was a man who cared for the people and he was a man that was compassionate and he was a man who loved the church and loved God. They say Dr. Ohui's legacy will live on. Many persons in Grand Bahama, I want to encourage them to do something in his memory. I know personally I'm going to do something in his memory uh, for young men. And him and I talked about that uh, several years ago uh, when he first took ill. And we've been trying to do that, uh, trying to help young men to go into the field of becoming doctors. Well, Dr. Hui was really that physician who knew it all. He was the go-to person. He was someone that always knew the diagnosis. And I think that transcended just beyond just medicine, but, but in life. He seemed to be someone you can go to for advice, uh, for answers, um, for inspiration, for support. And, and that was the legacy he left behind. I think his legacy should be one of excellence and treating everyone from the greatest to the least with the same amount of care, attention. One of the big things he was a proponent of was education, education of ourselves and education of the patients. So I think that if each of us take a little bit of that with us every day, that would be continuing to live out his legacy. Dr. Ohui died on October 30th at the age of 53 after a battle with cancer. Tonight, as we conclude our series on making the grade, Jamila Misik shines the light on students at the Grand Bahama Academy. Grand Bahama Academy is the only Seventh-day Adventist educational institution on Grand Bahama, and although seemingly small in number, the GBA Flames continue to excel in national examinations. One of the top scholars is Elihu Mackey Jr. The fourth grader says his favorite subject is language arts and thanks his teacher and his dad for helping him to prepare. My teacher, she was letting us do some stuff for before our class and my dad, he used to go with me to prepare me and he was testing me. Meantime, seventh grader Trevonia Cooper says she believes she did exceptionally well in her examinations despite social studies being the most difficult. She shares the importance of sitting examinations at such an early age. Taking these exams are very important because it shows you um, your ability, what you could do, because it's a grade level assessment to see what you have learned. 
10th grader Robernique Brennan passed all nine of her BJCs and says her favorite subject is music. She also plays the clarinet and the piano. She says creating a study board at home made her preparations easier. In our class, we, we studied in groups at school and then when I was home, we would, I made like a poster board and like it had which subjects I would study on which day. So that was like my schedule and then my Grammy would test me on what I studied for. If like you don't have a schedule, like you're just wondering, okay, I already studied this, so why am I going to study it again? Or like, it just makes everything easier to me. The school's head boy, Rayon Stewart, sat seven BGCSEs in the 11th grade and plans to take chemistry next year. He believes sitting the exams prior to your senior year lightens the load. When you take your BJCs as early as possible, um, it allows you to have more free time to focus on more subjects you desire to do good in during the school term. The senior says he's an aspiring chef and knows in order to get there, it is going to take hard work, determination, prayer and sacrifice. He adds that taking his BGCSEs is preparing him for his future career goals. Particularly the biology, combined science, physics and chemistry, those BGCSEs um, lay the pathway for the culinary environment concerning um, reactions, how metals um, react with heat and stuff like that. And I think it would actually pay the good way to give you a, a, a basic understanding of how the world works. He says although studying is important, putting God first is also essential to making the grade. Jamila Mizik, ZNS Network News. And we say hats off to all of the students who did well in those national exams. And Jay is here with sports. What's coming up? Well, high school softball. Girls in particular, they had some very good games yesterday, so we'll talk about that. And also, primary school basketball is still going on at Boats in Georgia St. Jackie with Gymnasium. Okay, stay close. Sports is up next with Jay Philippe.